Hi, I'm Liam Howe from Stick Pimps, and you're listening to the Nothing Shocking podcast. Want to know what's going on in the world of music? Then tune in to the Nothing Shocking podcast, a non-genre-based, all-ages friendly rock and roll program. Join us weekly for interviews with all your favorite rock stars from the mainstream to the underground. You can find us at nothingshocking.libsyn.com or anywhere you download podcasts. We're putting the band back together. The numbers all go to 11. I'm talking about bands that rock. Led Zeppelin. What about Sabbath? ACDC. Motorhead. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. I get up above the ground and raise my head days like this. Think I should be dead. One for Satan, two for me. Let's cheat the devil in spite. Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeff Unted, and with me in Dog Bowl Studios is... Coach Nez. You can find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Lipson or any podcatchers. Like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at No Shock Pod. You can also find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Rock Rage Radio every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Central Time. Our sponsor is Ragged Records, located in downtown Rock Island, Illinois, and downtown Davenport, Iowa. We'd like to thank the Hong Kong Sleepover for allowing us to use their music for our intro and bumper ending. Tonight's guest is... Liam Howe of the Sneaker Pimps. Also of Ape Mink Press. Yeah. He's also a producer. He's got solo material. Right. Yeah, so he's working on new music for Sneaker Pimps and his solo material and also Ape Mink Press. Correct? Yep. Yeah. Hey, let's get to this interview. All right. Good night. Good night. Liam, welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'd like to introduce to you my co-host, Jeff Unted. Liam, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. I, I know that uh, COVID-19 has uh, put the lockdown on uh, artists and, and the mu- musicians and the entertainment world for the past two years. Uh, how have you kept yourself busy coming out of the pandemic? Um, I guess being my job and what I do... Um, in a way, COVID, you know, hasn't hit it that much um, because I'm always writing in in my studio. And in a way, apart from producing other people, which which is I did less of, um, mm-hmm. I actually did more writing and, and worked more on sneaker pimps and more on on uh, my solo project. Oh, very good. Well, you've been extremely busy with uh, new uh, Ape Mink Press, your solo material. Um, actually, you have new material uh, that's going to be close to being released here soon that we've heard can you talk a little bit more about the uh, new amp material yes of, of course uh, it's it's been bubbling away for the last i don't know four or five years probably <laughs> uh, and i've been not as long as the last th- uh, sneak Boots record which was which was um 18 years but uh, <laughs> but yeah it's been around for at least <laughs> at least three or four and it's a project that so I've, I'm I'm the main writer and um, I get I've, I've got uh, guest singers to come in and and sing songs and Ian from Sneak Pimps the lyricist is is helping me out too and yeah it's quite it's quite interesting uh, I've got some cool singers on the on the go and it's all sounding rather exciting oh so cool Jeff you got the next one here well yeah just talk about that transition of like was it originally anonymous and then uh, you decided to come public with it. Uh, the the amp record yeah um it was yeah i've kept it kept it quiet uh, for uh, for various reasons i mean one being um i'm quite unlike chris uh sneaker pimps chris uh, imx i'm a little less um um kind of 
stage uh um uh, as, you know I, i'm less likely to get on stage and, yeah. and uh, show off yeah so <laughs> so um in a way i've i'm i'm a bit more shy and i didn't know what the music was for really when i started making it um i just thought i just had an urge to make music uh my own music because i've been producing other people for right. nice. for so long you know for 20 years mm -hmm. really so i thought I'd, i need to just do something for myself whether it was going to be released or not didn't really matter. So I didn't have any grand plans. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, you know, when it comes to uh, the uh, amp songwriting, how does the uh, writing process work for you? How does it differ from the other ventures that you've been in? Um, uh, interesting, yeah. I, I guess I'd write the same as I would if I was writing a Snake Pimp song, but... Um, Obviously, I have to finish it myself without any, you know, without Chris's help or, or uh, so I, I have to kind of make decisions, my, you know, on my own and have more of an identity and know what I want to hear. I think, I think sonically speaking, there's, it's a kind of lighter, uh, more kind of, um, rhythmic -y kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's probably more pop than, than, um, certainly more pop than IMX and, it's kind of strange, very mutant pop. Uh, it's, <laughs> and I've been, I think my, because I've got kids, they, they over the last five years, um, I've li been listening to so much of their music. So a lot of Frank Ocean and, and, um, um, James Blake mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff, the internet. And, and so I've, I've had quite a lot of, kind of uh, uh r&b and soul influences uh, and also that was kind of when i was when i used to dj back in the 90s mm. i used to always dj funk and soul and disco and all sorts so it's a kind of um it's a little bit of a uh, departure from the darker more kind of gothic qualities of some sneaker pimp songs and it's got a it's got a kind of more i guess a more modern or uh, yeah, hopefully a current feel. Mm, very good. Well, to kind of uh, piggyback off that question is, you know, when you're writing music for uh, AMP, uh, do you have to get into a certain uh, writing mode opposed to when you're writing music for Sneaker Pimps? Or do you just write the song and say, hey, this will be great for AMP or this will be great for Sneaker Pimps? How does it work for you? Yeah, I definitely put a different hat on when I'm when I'm writing an AMP song. Uh Again, it's something that I, when I try and sing the songs, I try and kind of, I try and do a almost the kind of rare groove uh, R&B kind of, uh, oh shit, that's my <laughs> computer playing something. He's just playing, he's playing the piano for me. Um, yes, yeah, so, so I, I try and uh, I, I try and do a kind of an impression of, of Curtis Mayfield or something, and it doesn't sound anything like it. But in, in my mind, yeah. in my mind, I'm kind of, um, you know, I, I'm channeling uh, uh, soul music. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, do you tackle but vocals? It's, it's on? kind of... Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I, I always sing the demos. Okay. And at the moment, uh, three of the songs out of the perhaps 11 or 12, uh, I haven't managed to, to get a better version from someone else. So you never know I just, what my vocals may remain on one <laughs> or two. Yeah. Nice. Well, you know, as we see, you know, the pop culture of, of, of music and entertainment changing throughout time, and, and we've talked to many artists, and right now it looks like TikTok artists are the, yeah. are the thing now, or are, are, are taking up the, the pop charts as far as uh, pop music goes. Uh, for you, as, as, as the uh, producer and musician that you are, um, what, what is your thought process on, on TikTok artists at home filling up the pop charts as far as you know what what is popular culture now instead of you know the the musicians like yourself that that have been you know trained and been doing this for years instead of somebody just pressing a button on a computer yeah well i mean tiktok is a strange beast and <laughs> who knows how long it's going to be around I, I guess it's got a shelf life and something else something equally bizarre will come along exactly but um i i i mean i've benefited from from some tiktok uh scenarios because you know for instance the marina and the diamonds song uh, uh kind of trended on on tiktok and you know that helped my royalties sure. yeah <laughs> hugely <laughs> uh, so 
you know, so I'm not against it. it it's um, the, the problem is that it's it kind of slightly it downsizes music's cultural impacts and kind of puts it as a soundtrack to something a little bit banal. So it it is um, it's 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 not the greatest way to to promote or, or, or to disseminate music. Very, very much agree. Yeah. Um, what are what are your? We kind of talked, uh, alluded to it a little bit, but what are some of your musical influences that you use when you're writing music? On 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 the amp stuff. Uh, yeah, for yourself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, let me think uh, again. Uh, for for amp, I've been. I think of um, Frank Ocean's Blonde mm-hmm. uh, was still one of my favorite records. It's just absolutely brilliant i love the way he he's got kind of indie quality to it it's got a solely kind of quality it's got total modernity um you know i, I love it i'd love to get him to sing on, on one of my amp songs if he's out there yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get hold of oh yeah um and, and then you know going back stuff uh, i guess a lot of stevie wonder i'm kind of picking up again these days and and enjoying and my youngest daughter is really into in, into um, kind of the old stuff. So, so I've I've been digging through my record collection and picking out strange and, and strange folk songs and and all sorts. I, I don't have any boundaries when it comes to influence. I'm I'm pretty um, eclectic. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Well, let's kind of switch gears on here. Mm-hmm. Um, as we look in the near future, what's in the work for Sneaker Pimps? Well. Uh, I'd like to think that we would, uh, we may, we may uh, do a, a small tour hmm. after uh, Chris has finished his next IMX um, commitments. But the, the idea is to, yeah, is to try and do a, a small US tour. Oh, very cool. With maybe, a, with maybe a couple of dates here, and then we've got, we are, um, we're going to write another record. Well, and we're not, um, I don't, and we're not going to leave it so long this time yeah. <laughs> as, as that's you, good news as you you were talking about you know touring and um art, artists such as yourself that have been around for quite a while uh, they have different philosophies on, on touring as far as you know the, 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 it's a, a one month out or it, it's the weekend fly out dates or it's the festival stuff or some of the artists still are getting in the bus and doing it the old-fashioned way in, in, in your in your mind right now what is the most idealistic way for for you, for sneaker pimps to go out and tour, uh, private jet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's been so long since I toured. Um, the last time I toured was probably two thousand and three. Oh wow! So, mm. so I've forgotten how it works, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's changed hugely since since I was on on the road. Um, you know, I mean, it's changed a lot of. A lot of ways it's changed changed for the better i mean i, I think it's easier to make money from touring these days mm. and and the public are more likely to to spend money on a con you know a gig ticket than now on a record so i can see how it works uh it, culturally speaking it is it has become a very important part of the music process so i'm keen to to do it uh how do, how to do it is is a, is a question it's something that chris IMX Chris is a, a total veteran and um, genius at is is making the live thing work. So so I more or less just hand over the baton to Chris <laughs> on this one. Um, I mean I, I don't I, I don't even know what I'd be playing. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Well, we talked about uh, um, with Sneaker Pimps your your, your last album twenty twenty one's squaring the circle. Uh, it's been yeah. like 18, 20 years since your last album. Can you talk a little bit about, I mean, it's ended up being a double album, correct? So w- can you talk about that process of, of collecting the material? Yes. Well, we, we started, I mean, the, 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 some of the songs date back to, yeah, 2006. Um, we, we started writing what was going to be the fourth sneaker record and we, kind of got so far and and then imx took off and my production career started start to take off so we kind of put on the shelf and said let's let's uh let's do this as soon as we can 
And then we had about three other sessions. We had, I mean, the way I break it down is I call it kind of heritage period, mid period and late period. And, <laughs> and we have about kind of five or six songs from each period. Well, so cool. and, 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 and a lot of tracks that, that, um, that are, that are still on the shelf and, and we may use elsewhere. Well, as we're talking about, uh, scoring the circle, you released it, uh, September of 2021, mm-hmm. right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the, uh, I guess, maybe the thought process of releasing a new album right during the COVID-19 pandemic? <laughs> yeah. Well, for us, um, we, you know, it, it was it was then or never, I think. We, we, were, we both had time on our hands. I mean, that was you know, one good thing about, about COVID. Yeah. It meant that we were, Chris couldn't tour and I and I was, uh, I, I couldn't do lots and lots of production. So we were both, uh, you know, we, we, we were both free and committed to doing it. Mm. So every single night from, well, my time from about, from about kind of six at night till about three in the morning, I, I worked with Chris on, on Zoom. Uh, and we, we bashed it out from, you know, over the continents. <laughs> no, very good. Um, as far as, I guess, you know, at, we're looking at the dawn of um, artists not necessarily releasing tangible product, but releasing stuff uh, through the Internet, through Spotify, through whatever service there is. The, the tangible product, it seems like it's going by the wayside. Um, for you, for Chris, for Sneaker Pimps, uh, what type of, of a tangible product and how much did, of it did you have uh, produced for this uh, last album? Uh, do you mean uh, tangible as in physical? Or? Yeah, phys- yeah, physical copy, yeah. Yeah, uh, we've done actually quite well on the physicals. Uh, the, the final sales have been rather rather uh, encouraging, funnily enough. Um, and, you know, that's the, the resurgence of vinyl is, is, a, is a fascinating um, phenomenon, even though I think in actual fact it's not so much to play it. I wonder yeah. how many of these records are going to play. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think most of it is to put on your shelf. And go, I've, I've got a record. <laughs> so that's good. And then again, like t-shirts and merch and stuff. Um, that's, you know, that, that again is a tangible asset. And, and it's something that's it's something that I didn't really think about. But, you know, Chris is very up on the modern release strategies. And of course, it kind of makes sense if someone's, already got the record on Spotify for their $10 a month. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, they may well buy a t-shirt for instance, which, which is, you know, going to get the, in terms of, in terms of clicks on Spotify, you'd probably have to have 500. I don't know more than that. Probably, probably, um, hundred thousand clicks for a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> in terms of revenue. I, I don't know what the figure would be. But it's yeah, it's it's incredible how little the the artists get. Yeah, um, very true. Uh, which yeah, which which is a, a shame. I mean, the way we we did it ourselves because of that, really, um, because we we knew that if we did it on a on a bigger label, it, the the revenue, you know, the, the we get so little of the mm. money that was that, that came in that that it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be fair. And I think the fans. Um, they they like to you know think that it all goes to the artist at least at least the artist share goes to the artist and of course Spotify take their thirty percent and, and the devil takes them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, uh, can you talk a little bit about working with uh, Simone Jones? Uh, she's on a majority of the tracks as as a singer. Yeah, I, I met Simone about uh, maybe about eight years ago. I was. Uh, I was uh, um, producing her first record, which actually has not come out yet. Hmm. Uh, it's like a curse. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and uh, because I because when I I from working with Lana Del Rey on her first record, um, her A and R put me in touch with Simone, who was on Simone's on the same label in Europe, and she came over and we did a lot of work together. And I always thought she had the perfect uh, kind of dark dark pop kind of qualities that that would you know suit suit sneakers yeah. and so when we when we picked it up she i thought she was a great match yes oh, so cool yeah uh can you talk a little bit about that first uh the first song uh, opening track fighter yes yeah it's 
it's I mean, that was written in Cypress Park in LA. <laughs> I remember that, mm-hmm. um, and that was the mid-period track. Uh, and it's yeah, it's it's a uh, we wrote it on a, on an acoustic guitar, which was kind of nice. That's what we 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 did for becoming X. We wrote everything on on acoustic guitar and made sure it worked as a song. So so we wrote yeah, it, and it's a kind of song about. Yeah, it has kind of mental health yeah. qualities to mm. it. Uh, I, yeah, I, I was kind of diagnosed with bipolar uh, around that time, and mm. writing a song about it was was a, a kind of you know good bit of therapy in a way. Oh, so cool! And yeah. and, I, and, I, and you know, to, for everyone out there who who does have trouble, you know, it's it's important to you know to to to, to touch those those people and. And it, you know, hopefully the song is is uh, has well hope in it. You know, yeah. it's 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 uh, it's kind of saying you know stick it out and you you can get there. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, we've had some you know very uh, touching feedback from people um, from fans that that you know have their own troubles and and you know music helps. Oh, so yeah. cool. Not only have you been busy working on your own music, uh, you've been a producer for what close to thirty years now. Is that correct? Yeah, it sounds a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have the uh, same satisfaction working as a producer as you do creating your own music? How does it work for you? Uh, I mean, I love producing. Uh, I mean, when I, funny enough, when I started making music when I was thirteen, fourteen. I, I wanted to be a producer. That's I didn't want to be in a band. I wanted to be a producer. Mm. Uh, and so I thought, well, what's the best and quickest way of being a producer? And I, I reckoned that the quickest way was to get in a band, do well, <laughs> and then become a producer. <laughs> so so Sneaky Pimps, in a way, was a kind of a, a, a portal to become a producer. But, of course, you know... Uh, I've, you know, you you fall in love with the with the whole process of being in a band, and I had an amazing time, and it was, you know, a hugely informative part of my life. And when I when I kind of stopped being in the band and became a full time producer, I, you know, I started to miss being in bands and mm. miss writing my own stuff. Uh, it's it's important to have your own outlet and and be creative in a singular sense, uh, even though, of course. I put my imprint on the music that I create for other people. It's it's sure. still, you know, in the last couple of years, I've I've been doing a lot of my own stuff. Oh, cool! So cool, Jeff. You got the next one? Uh, yeah, I can just uh, can you talk a little bit about that creative process of working with another artist, like writing songs? How does how does that work for you to, to, when you're approaching uh, songwriting? Yeah, um, it's. I guess what I do is uh, is um, I, I usually have a long talk with someone when I first meet them and almost like a kind of therapy session mm. and you talk and talk and, uh, you know, try and try and understand someone. And, you know, for instance, Lana Del Rey, when she came over, she was troubled in various ways and she wanted to um, vent. And it was really interesting, you know, just getting into the psychology of it. And, and then, of course, you it's almost like making someone – a suit or, or you know uh, measuring them up yeah and you know making them some some kind of outfit that fits them perfectly uh and and that's the kind of that's my goal is, is to is to make them a bespoke you know outfit just you know the perfect suit um and it's you know it's i mean some some producers or writers kind of want artists to sing their songs you know like, you know, here's a song I've written, and they push it on the artist, like I don't know Max Martin or others. Um, whereas I'm very much kind of, uh, you know, a conduit for the artist uh, to to write something that they want. Mm, yeah, that's, very nice. that's the kind of that's that's my goal. Uh, it doesn't always work like that, but it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so, so after, yeah, after about an hour or two of talking, then then it gets down to the nitty gritty and we have to make music which is always absolutely terrifying no matter how many times i've done it it's always quite terrifying (laughs) to make make music with a stranger (laughs) well you know that being said you you spoke of lana del rey and um i guess 
I know that you worked with her on the 2012 Born to Die album. Had you worked with her on her on her debut album as well? Yeah, it was the debut album. Yeah, that's I, I, we did about three or four songs, uh, and then she was you know she was totally un, unknown at that point. I, I do kind of specialize in in, in uh, working with people in a de- developmentary sense. So I you know I, I, I worked with Twigs, FK Twigs for two years before it actually happened. Oh, that was a yeah. Must have done about thirty songs with with Twigs uh, oh, cool. be- before we fa- before we found found the right thing. As so far- it can take a long time. Okay. Yeah. As far as your involvement with the uh, Born to Die album, how involved were you with that album? Um, I was kind of one of the. Well, I, I remember getting a, an email when it started to blow up. I got an email from uh, from Lana. Uh, a, a, a thank you email and there was only a, a, about eight of us on it so so i was pretty much up there um there was you know with the others with the other guys oh very good do you have to get the next one yeah is, is there an artist out there right now that you haven't worked with that you 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 want to you want to produce an album for wow um yeah, I'm um, plenty. I, I really like the new Salt record. Have you, do you know that record? I do not. S A U L T. That's really good. But the production on it is so good that I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't change it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously love uh, Frank Ocean to give me a bell. That mm-hmm. would be nice. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I, a lot of the stuff that I, I work on is is uh, you know pretty underground. Sure. It's, it's not known so. I'm working with a few people at the moment that are pretty cool. Oh, so cool. All right, so we have one last question One last question for you, and we'll leave you alone for the evenings. I know it's getting late oh, over oh, don't, don't worry. I know it's getting <laughs> late in the U.K. for you, but um, I ask this to this uh, to a lot of our um, artists that come on, our guests. The mystery of rock and roll. It used to be when we were young kids, uh, we, you know, the only way we got to, to know about Led Zeppelin or Kiss or any any band that had a had a mystery feel to them was through magazines. And once the internet and the social media came out, the the cat kind of goes out of the bag, and the mystery is no longer in rock and roll anymore because we pretty much know what everybody's doing all the time. Um, if we don't hear from the artists themselves, somebody else is snooping around and giving out the the, the goods about what's happening. So, um, you know, for you. The artist, the producer, uh, do you um, like the accessibility that the internet and social media has given us to artists now, or do you miss the mystery of rock and roll? Um, unfortunately, I'm, I miss the mystery of rock and roll, uh, <laughs> but that's because I grew up in an era where where it was mysterious, and mm. and you know, as you say, there was a lot of facts that you just didn't know and wouldn't know, uh, and so I, I do lament the, the passing of that. But at the same time, I understand, you know, social media and, and its, and its benefits. But I, I, for instance, don't follow anyone, uh, on social media because I, I, uh, I'm not interested. Um, I, I like the music and, I, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm not invested so much that I'll, you know, that I'll, um, get the TikTok and, you know, spend loads of time on my phone. <laughs> uh, so I guess it's, you know that's an old-fashioned I'm, I'm sounding old-fashioned and that's uh, I, I do you know I've, I've got friends in the music industry who are endlessly telling me to get a TikTok account <laughs> <laughs> do a silly dance but you know I'm, I'm not sure about it yeah. um, I you know I, I think there is still there needs to be mystery there mm. needs to be um, some kind of magic that that uh, is not accessible uh, by, by fans and, and I think you know I think it's like it's like you know, it, it's like, it, it, you know, there needs to be a veil uh, and a separation between the artist oh, and, and the fan. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess Jeff has one more question. Yeah, for you. I, 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 you, you, you kind of were something you, you were talking about sparked my thing. But um, as an as an artist, when you're when you're you listen to music, but when you're writing songs, do, do you have to like turn it off and, and not listen to any music or, or, or are you able to separate and still write? <laughs> In, in terms of listening to, to other to to other music, other people's music, yes. yeah. Well, that that's a really interesting question because that's where me and Chris differ quite a bit. Uh, Chris hasn't listened to any other music since two thousand and six, and he won't he won't mind me saying that. So he listens to he listens to classical music and and uh, oh. other music, but he doesn't listen to pop music. Yeah. 
um, because he doesn't want it to influence his writing. He wants it to be purely kind of from the unconscious and, and, and uh, unadulterated and, and, you know, not mixed up with, with plagiarizing, you know, current material. But because I produce other people constantly, you know, uh, regularly, I have to know what's going on yeah. musically. Otherwise, you know, I, I can't do my job. So, so I, I need to listen. I, I you know, as homework, I, I listen to new music every Friday. Um, mm. So, but at the same time, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to copy stuff. And it's amazing how, how quickly things turn around. So, you know, if I was, you know, if I'd made a dubstep record, I'd look really stupid now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, um, we are out of our allotted time for the evening. Um, is there anything that we did not cover tonight that you would like to plug or promote? Um, no, I think I think it's all, all covered. We definitely covered the amp stuff, and that that's great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, this is how it's going to work. We have about four weeks behind on our release date, so we're looking at about a month, and we'll have this all cleaned up. Jeff, the editing wizard, will have it all cleaned up for you, and uh, we'll get it to your press person immediately when it's and send the link when it's all ready to go. Excellent. Thank Great. you very much. Have a good night. Yeah, thank thank you. you again. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.
to the night you think you know night demon then the night demon heavy metal podcast is for you step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon we're talking band history song analysis studio anecdotes stories from the road it's everything a diehard night demon fan could want and more this is the only place to learn the inside scoop the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts.